What's going on guys, TTORX6 here back for another third party review and today we're taking a look at FT24 Rouge, otherwise known as RC. And uh, this is the Fans Toys RC and she has been catching a lot of flack, a lot of people are having problems with her. Uh, overall, I think she's awesome. Now I do think that she's Fans Toys weakest figure, but it's as a result of her being such a small framed character uh, that you really have to have some really small pieces on there. Uh, to make her work. Uh, one thing I've seen is that these kind of flop around. Uh, I don't know if mine are a little more solid than others, but I mean when I put it down it seems that it catches kind of on her windshield here at least a little so they don't really swing out to the side. I'm not really wobbling my figure around too much so uh, on a shelf they stay. These are a little bit loose. Uh, at least this side is on mine. It doesn't really peg in. But again on a shelf I'm never going to notice. Um, yes they will flap up like that and this little piece will flap around. But again on a shelf none of that's actually a problem for me. Um, so she stands there and she looks great. She is difficult to stand because she has, you know, RC's feet, which are very delicate. I do wish that they ended up incorporating something like the MMC one, where they added this little piece here, uh, which does give a little bit of extra dynamic range on the figure. Um, but even that doesn't stop it from falling. And they do have something they could work with. So something that could clip in the foot to make her stand a little better would have definitely been appreciated. But she can stand, you know, in a decent enough pose uh, without much effort. Now, like I said, I think because she's so delicate, that's probably why she is Fans Toys' weakest release. But the engineering and, you know, the feel of the materials and stuff uh, definitely put her in the, like, I'm okay with this being a Fans Toys release. Um, some people do have problems with this gap here. I don't think it's necessarily as bad as people think from most angles. You don't end up really seeing it too much. Uh, it would have been nice if maybe they had a... Uh, spare chest for those that just want to keep it in robot mode that just kind of fills in all this uh, Maybe it'll come maybe it won't I don't know uh, it probably could have been engineered out of the way But I don't think that it's like a huge deal breaker um, And it's still like in my opinion. This is the best RC we've ever seen I don't think the toy world Leah looks very good. Uh, I don't have the MMC one here uh, But this thing is a nightmare to deal with and I can never get the head to peg in. This is the, uh, I don't know what they call her. Uh, I don't think the hips and stuff particularly look good. Um, and it's definitely not G1 at all. So, I mean, this is the MMC one. And then, I mean, I guess there's the Classics one, which is fairly good. But for a long time, the best third-party one we had was uh, this Delicate Warrior I think it was Delicate Warrior by Igear, and like she's got this big like armature thing going on on the neck and uh, just is total garbage by today's standards. I don't even really know why I still have this thing. I mean look at it. It's awful. But the sculpting of this is superior and when you put it on what's largely a Fans Toys dominated shelf for me, uh, she looks fantastic next to Springer and Cup and the uh, Hasbro Hot Rod uh, really should be the Hasbro Rodimus should be standing here uh, and Ultra Magnus but she just looks fantastic. I'm not going to spend too much time here. She does come with accessories, a blaster, um, a set of spare hands so you'll notice I actually have one of each style hand on her. Um, you have the one with the tab here that you take the gun and you just slot this into the tab if you can, as deep as you can, and then you close this and that helps her hold the gun because it's very delicate uh, and without it she probably is not holding the gun very well. And then we have the hand here that doesn't have that extra tab in there and some people have been complaining about the look of the hand because of the two pins here but if they made it just a stationary hand uh, like they did on Leah, people are going to complain. Was it Leah or Leia? I think it might have been Leia. Whatever. But the Toy World one had hands you could swap in and out that had no articulation and people didn't like that and so Fans Toys opted for articulation and people don't like that. Whatever. I think it's fine. It doesn't distract from the figure anymore, in my opinion, than like, you know, that joint does there or on Cup. Uh, it's a toy. It's not an actual robot. It is what it is. 
she has the more chesty chest piece. Uh, I like the more G1 accurate looking one, so I took it off, but just wanted to show you uh, she does have paint chipping issues, and that is a problem, but the problem is is that we're painting notoriously <laughs> colors that you have to put on thick on a piece of die cast. I actually kind of wish that she didn't have die cast in the chest just so this paint chipping wouldn't have really have occurred. Um, it's nice. Ultimately, I probably can touch it up, but just be aware of it. Um, the transformation does cause her to kind of explode apart, and as a result, things on mine have chipped, but none of it takes away from the character. You have the goggled face. You have... This is the stock face. I actually replaced it. So everyone said they couldn't really figure out what the difference between the two faces are. What the difference is, is the cheeks on... Uh, the replacement are a little bit more gaunt than the one that comes on the figure. So in my opinion, it ends up looking a little bit more feminine than the one that's on the figure. That's the only difference. You have kind of your G1 cartoon, which has really big eyes, which kind of ends up looking awkward uh, when you put it next to all the other figures. You have the open mouth face, kind of closed face, uh, or eyes closed a little, and then the open mouth, eyes open. Faces that I don't particularly need. You also have the rifle, which goes into two parts, the stock and the front part. I don't understand that, because unfortunately there's no place on this figure to store anything in either mode. Which is a the bummer. The articulation on this figure does pretty much everything you would want it to. The head's on a ball joint, and then that neck inside is on a swivel here, which is a little difficult to move around. Uh, but you can get plenty of range out of her. does look a little weird when she's looking up and the neck kind of comes out of the white piece. But, I mean, whatever. It, it's there. Um, for me, I think just like that is plenty of up and down. Uh, and then you can get plenty of downward motion out of that neck piece swiveling around. No problem. Ball joint swivels here. Double jointed swivels on a lot of them. Forearm swivels. No problem coming down to the legs. Plenty of range of motion out of here. Um, not really hindered by this, though it's not necessarily the best looking uh, when you got it like that. But yeah, I mean, it's fine. And with an action figure stand, you are capable of getting her into kind of whatever you want. You know, she can be doing the Bruce Lee flying kick. Whatever you need her to do. The knee, I really kind of wanted to see this knee pad swivel around in some way. Um, but in person, it doesn't bother me all that much, and you get plenty of range of motion out of it. I just don't necessarily think that this looks as nice as I would like it to. I just wish that rotated down. Uh, but in the end, it's really kind of a small complaint. Thigh swivel down there. Uh, the foot is on a rocker. The toes don't bend downward. They do bend upwards like this. Um, and they're die cast. Again, would have been nice to have a little stand here, so she stood a little bit easier. Um, hopefully someone either makes one, otherwise I'm just going to get one of those like SH figure art stands that can clamp around her thigh. Problem solved. So most people are pretty f afraid to transform her, and I've seen some stress marks on the plastic. I've only transformed her once, so hopefully this goes well. We'll see how it goes. But before you transform her, and any third party figure, I recommend you go on Amazon and you buy a bottle of silicone shock oil. It's like $10 and it saves you problems. You will barely ever use it. I think I've had this shock oil for years. And the first thing that I've seen is everybody commenting about how, you know, these here are stressing out. And so they're still, they still peg in very tightly, as you can see. Um, but I'm not putting any exceptional amount of pressure on these to pull them out and all you do is you dip a toothpick in your shock oil and you just add a little bit to the surface of this you can kind of see maybe if the light catches it there's a little bit of shine there and it just allows it to plug in and pull out relatively easy that's never going to stress out on me it's never going to be a problem so anyway that's how we start we take that we unpeg the head and we unpeg this this comes up we pull this out just like so, and then I like to do this just so I don't forget it and it's an easy point to grab everything. Pull out her torso, pull out her knee, pull out her calf down here. Do that for each side here. There we go. So we kind of got everything that we need to here. We'll come back and we'll work on the upper body. So with this done,
This is to me the hardest part of this. So you're gonna disconnect these and then you want to rotate the one kind of as far to the side as you can and bring the other one and you have to kind of hold the back of the car here and swing it down so it clears this neck piece and all the way around. And you can do that again for this other side, bring that all the way around. That's, to me, one of the hardest parts here. The second hardest part is working with this. From here, bring this up and you kind of want to, it's on this, this slide right here, so you want to slide it down so it'll clear through this back piece while you're transforming it. And it does kind of take, like I said, you're really kind of exploding this figure. And slide this, this around as you're sliding this pink piece on through. And let's see, got a little more sliding to do here. And then this pink piece should come loose and you should be able to go ahead and flatten this piece up like that. From here, uh, let's go ahead and we'll pull this little piece out here and kind of set this into place. And this is going to clip down around this and it should help fill in these gaps pretty nicely. So we got that going on. So from here, bring the arms down on their ball joint and bring them back through on the back here. And bring that all the way around. And this is, I kind of forget how to do these, so I might have to jump cut and take a look at the picture because um, there is kind of a specific way we need the arms but if I recall correct it's going to end up looking something like I think it's like this and I'll let you know obviously if I have it the wrong way yet yeah, it's, it's actually out to the side like that and you can plug these in they don't tell you to do that to a later step actually let's pull the wheel out just kind of push it down and it'll peg into place and then go ahead and secure that in place at the top so let's go ahead and do that again again being careful that we can rotate things properly plug that into place here pulling out our wheel in the process I do wish that it was a little bit, I actually wish that the wheels weren't made out of rubber, is what I wish. Um, because there is a rubberness to the wheel, and you are putting a little stress on the rubber when you pull out the wheel. I think it'll survive just fine, but just kind of be aware of that. So that's most of the front of the car here. Uh, we can take her other arm, rotate it around like so, and the head opens up like so um, that's going to do the front so this is to me the next hardest part we want to open these things up and then this is just not terribly clear in the instructions but you want to pull this out and you want to kind of pull that armature out of the way and then this all should fold up like this you want to bring this spoiler piece, I guess you have antenna, I don't know, around and bring these little white pieces in and then fold those pink pieces back in. So again, we'll do that to this side. Um, kind of pull this up like that. Carefully lift that plastic piece over the pink joint, pulling it out like so, flipping it around here, go ahead and plug this in, folding out all our little panels and folding our pink one back in. And this is, this is really honestly the scariest part because this piece doesn't feel 
Doesn't feel like it's gonna break, but it's definitely just kind of teetering there. It's like that MP Megatron. So I try to keep the torso touching the ground while I'm working on the top part. A little harder to do when you're reviewing it for someone, but uh, you know, it's certainly doable. So from here, uh, you wanna fold out this pink piece and rotate the armature as you're gonna need to, to see it line up and rotate this pink piece uh, so it fills in the car. Make sure your gray piece is in place. And I think you can see what's gonna happen here. You wanna collapse all this stuff in on its armatures. And let's make sure we have it in there correct. I think that's right, but it should peg into the top. Well, what should happen, and I have it a little bit wrong here. A little bit hard to see, but you want this pink piece to slide under the body up there and plug in and then you can plug the top piece carefully into the front up here and now I'll get, I might have to take this off camera just so I can no, I got it so we're okay I thought I was gonna have to take it off camera just so I could see it with my eyes a little bit closer because I'm getting old and I can't see as well sucks right and you want the little console here to be up now they tell you to do some weird thing where you kind of rotate it around but I find the steering wheel is always kind of in place it's always a little obscured by this black piece so just be aware of that so anyway we've got that let's go ahead and do the same thing for this side uh, rotate all this stuff around clean this up and rotate the joint so it's facing the right way rotate this pink piece out just like so and take this and with this in place you can now you might have to work this pink piece a little bit by hand just to get it to collapse the right way mine is like unreasonably stiff boy that could be interpreted the wrong way couldn't it Anyway, once you have that in position, get the little pink tab underneath, slide it up in place, and secure this. And you pretty much got RC coming together. You can actually go ahead at this point and secure the back of the car together. These little panels flip up and inside there. Whoops. Sorry about that. <laughs> Uh, disconnect them uh, because in the process of keeping like I said keeping the legs grounded I ended up getting them through the car so unless RC is a weird legged car uh, that's probably not gonna work so we kinda got this going on here and you know it might be that we bend not sure which elbow joint we bend on to put them in place but they do they do stick out just a little. Okay, so now we got this. So we're gonna go ahead and open these right here. And you're gonna flip the leg around the other way. All the way around like that. And then what that ended up doing, opening those actually puts the slot for these circular pieces here uh, to go into. So now we're gonna take the leg like this, I believe it is, with the, the toes arched in. And it should plug in just like that. And we'll go ahead and do that again for this other side, again, with the toes arched in. And just kinda squish everything a little bit together to clean her up now just like so and like that and there we go we've got RC in our car mode and honestly it looks a lot scarier than it is as long as you understand how everything is intended to move uh, 
it's not that big of a deal to get it to move. And like I said, anything that's too stiff, you add just a tiny little drop of shock oil. Like a shock oil can make your, your ball jointed action figure unable to stand. That's how slippery it is. Uh, so just the tiniest little bit of uh, that shock oil and you'll be able to pop things that slide in and out of place uh, relatively easily and probably never risk stressing it again. So let me go ahead and, oops, you know what, I forgot. Uh, when you do this, these feet are supposed to kind of tab into these side panels here. Based on the die cast, I do notice that her legs like to fall out of the car mode a little. Um, but overall, it's not a problem. Let me look at the instructions because I feel like I have the hands just a little bit wrong and I'll be right back. So yeah, real quick, I didn't need the instructions. I looked at it and you do want the second uh, joint here and the hands kind of look like they're going into that little recess uh, a little bit. Uh, and what that'll do is it just kind of hides them from the side a little bit better from most angles. You can't see them at all and all four wheels will touch the ground properly. Quick size comparison here is your, you know, standard MP side swipe mold. Uh, he's a little dark, so we'll put him in the front there. And you can just kind of see she's just a little bit longer, but typically speaking, she's an MP car in both size and width, uh, which is impressive because she's a really tall robot. And also for comparison, uh, here is the up until now uh, best RC who just looks like hot garbage in this mode too. Uh, and hot rod here in alt mode, just so you can see. And this is the MP hot rod, obviously. So, scales really nice, looks really nice together. So let's get her back to robot mode and let's get out of here. And we will once again start with the feet here. Oh, and some people don't like that you can see this here, and I get it, but I don't really think that that's an issue. I feel like people love to really nitpick things. Uh, the waist articulation, like it'd be nice if she had the waist swivel, but like, look how that's engineered. And then like, look at like something like this. Like this had no waist swivel either, and look at like these awful like armatures and stuff they had going on. Like, I don't know. I feel like it's kind of... I guess you could have put it on like a, a pull-out joint that you could swivel, but like, I mean, she has enough going on that I I personally am not missing the uh, waist swivel that everybody else seems to have. I mean, I guess everybody else has way more dynamic poses on their shelf than I have, um, but overall, I don't necessarily think that it's an enormous loss on this character. It would have been nice, but... I am willing to look the other way because everything else is so well done. So obviously all I'm doing right now is just kind of sliding all the stuff back together and fixing her feet and rotating her legs and we can go ahead and push her uh, torso back down just for stability. We'll come to these back pieces and let's point the camera up so we can see everything a little bit better. Uh, we're going to go ahead and disconnect these here, which, man, do they grip in pretty decently. There we go. Got them popped apart. Pop this stuff apart here and kind of swivel out these armatures just so they're all the way extended. Again. Definitely the hardest part is to work with these little armatures here. And let's see, I'm gonna try to get these back uh, as best I can. This is the type of part that actually, this is what throws me off the most. So we're gonna go ahead, extend these out. And again, I think it's just cause there's no real clear way how these things really feel like they're supposed to look. So let's go ahead and rotate this gray bit and this pink bit and this white bit on this side, and there's only the one pink bit on this side, obviously. Rotate them all in. Now, we're gonna take this, and let's see, the top of the car has to be the back of RC's head, so we I believe we want that joint up, like so. Oh, nope, maybe we want it down. This is the part 
like I said, it throws me off the most. This definitely needs to swivel around like this. And we kind of have to manipulate uh, this little pink piece until we find exactly how it needs to look. So this is going to come up and collapse in like this. So now that we have this in place, you want to bring this white piece, which does cause it to flex on this joint, and bring it over. And all this should kind of collapse up like this. You should find that this pink armature is kind of around that little point there. And I believe that's correct. This pink piece filled that in. Good. We'll leave it like that and hopefully we'll come back and find that we are correct. So we'll go ahead and kind of fold everything up the way it's supposed to look again. Which is like that. Bring this pink armature around to however is going to easiest allow this to transition past it. I guess down is the way to go. Bring the white piece above it. And then once you have that cleared, draw that armature back upwards so it's right around the pink bit there. And that should go like that. And that should be how we need the shoulders to look should be right so we're going to come back here to the uh, arms of rc we're going to pull them out and rotate them on this ball joint and just bring them all the way back as far as you can so just be mindful of that little piece of plastic but if you lubricated it it probably shouldn't be a problem so you can bring that just like that let's close up her head here let's Disconnect these side bits here and carefully unplug this and rotate this thing in. So now we need to get her head to be on the top. So that involves loosening this piece here, kind of pulling it in such a way that the pink piece folds on in like this and then around like so and I do find this to be at least a little bit troubling but after I've transformed her a couple times it seems like it is kind of clearing up you'll rotate this white piece all the way around and I believe if my mind serves me right we actually want to make sure that do we want to make sure that that's flush I think we do. I don't know. We'll leave it like that for now. Uh, it's flat against there and we'll, we'll come back to it after. The steering wheel you can kind of rotate around at this point however you want. So let's go ahead and yeah, see this this piece often will move on this joint here and you need to make sure that the white piece here is as flush as you can make it against the back. So it does kind of sit towards the bottom of that chamber there. So with that in place, we can go ahead and swivel this piece around. Sorry, it's a little tough to see. Uh, it should not contact the white piece. If it does, then you have to go back and adjust this here. Which can be hard to do, especially if you're on camera. So go ahead, swivel this around, making sure that you dodge that top head armature. And then get that as far out of the way as you can and bring the second piece Come on, don't fight. Up 
and around just like that. Once that's there, plug that in. Rotate this around the right way. The windshield goes into the little black piece here. And you should be able to, at this point, take this, kind of bring the front of the car, I find it easiest, I should say, to bring the front of the car in first and then plug this in. And that's how you make sure it's nice and solidly connected down there. Assuming we did this right, the head joint should come around here. And this should go in here. If you have problems with this, then your white piece here is not adjusted properly. And that could happen to us. Let's see what happens. Uh, it should peg in here. Yep, we're okay here. And that should be a fairly solid connection. I've noticed the G1 chest takes a little more force to get in there, but it's fine. And then that should come around from here. Just go ahead and adjust RC's arms and plug them in place just like so back in place rotate your fists around so they're the right way and then assuming we did this correctly we should be able to just rotate these armatures so they're facing the right way and bring them back down and there we go uh, this armature I can lift a little more inside there just so it sits a little bit higher and holds her backpack a little bit nicer and that should be down there you can go ahead and do whatever you want with the steering wheel frankly but there we go there's RC back in her robot mode uh, nothing is broken you know I, I think that time uh, being that this is the second time I've ever transformed it both directions I don't think anything is chipped any more than it was my first time. Let's see. Did the G1 chest chip? Nope. So she's perfect. And uh, I think Fans Toys did a great job. I honestly think that this figure is their weakest, but it's only because RC is a super fragile, delicate character who, if you want her to look like she's female, uh, you don't have a whole lot of places to hide moving joints and stuff. So yeah, this is T2RX6. I 100% recommend this figure if you're looking for an RC for your shelf. Uh oh, you know what? We made a mistake. We forgot to pull out this flap here. Uh, it's too late now. I'll have to go back and do that later because I do have to take this all apart. Uh, but I just noticed uh, that that flap's there. You know what? I don't even care that it's missing because I don't like how these dangle. So I almost would rather them just be hidden away back there. I'm actually surprised that went back together with that tucked up in there. Didn't realize that, but doesn't really affect anything. Really good figure. Uh, I highly recommend it. Definitely a worthy fans toys toy. Uh, I hope you guys agree. And I'll see you next time.